Good morning, Daily Huddlers. This is Wednesday, where we talk everything relationships and communication. And I am sharing a quote with you today that our guest shared with me. And I've taken it with me. It is, know yourself, love yourself, be yourself, and share yourself with others. Mm-hmm. Let's get this All right. Good morning. It's Wednesday, Relationships and Communications Day. And um, Tara's not with us today, so I'll be manning the ship with our guest, George Herrick. But before we get started, I want to start with some questions. I'm going to start with Tom. These are designed to get us present, which actually is going to be follow right into our question day. Tom, what time is it? Well, Catherine, the time is now. No other time but now. That's right. The only time that there is. And I'm going to go to Sorrel. Sorrel, good morning, Catherine. Good morning. Where are you and what are you grateful for? I am right here. If I twist an inch, I'd still be here. <laughs> I am here and I, I'm grateful for these conversations. Oh, I love Today's that. over 700 episodes. And every single one of them have given me a piece of my life that I didn't have before. I'm grateful for these conversations. Wow. Thank you, Sorrel. So impressive. Over 700 episodes that you and Gio started and put together. So grateful. And I'm grateful to be here too. And Stan, you came right at the right time. I have two questions for you, actually. And I love hearing these from you. How are you and who are you going to hug today? Wow, I am, I am inspired today. And um, I'm going to hug my mom. Oh, she's lucky. That's awesome. I would love to hug my mom today. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right. Now we get to dive in. Um, this question is is really powerful. Um, We've got George Herrick with us today. And I have to be honest, George, I didn't even pull up your bio. I had so I didn't even look at it. I had so much fun talking to you. And so I'm going to roll with that and let you tell us what you want to about yourself. But I think who you are and how you show up comes through so much that um, I'm not sure the words would do it justice. So the question today is how do I be with me when I'm with you? Hmm. So how do I be with George Herrick when I'm with all of you in the huddle? Um, And um, so who I am and what I do and what I feel and what I know and all of that just for me always kind of gets jumbled together because uh, I do what I love, uh, the work that I do as as a shadow coach and an artist and a recovery coach, um, I just, I love what I do. And, 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 and it's all a part of who I am. It's an extension of, of what I would do if I weren't getting paid. (laughs) So, so, um, uh, so I guess what I would say is, you know, I'm also an author and like I said, I'm an artist, um, and, I'm a husband and, you know, all the things. But if I were to get cute about it, I would say that I'm a journeyer through life and and a partaker in life and um, just, um, I love being alive. Uh, and And it hasn't always been that way. And I think that's one of the reasons why it means so much to me now you know there was a time when i was living on the street there was a time when i attempted suicide and um that was in the depths of my addiction and depression and um and that's 
I remember those days. I don't go back and live in those days. Um, I learn from them, but it's not who I am now. And so I really appreciate the, um, the coming back to life. Uh, I'll, I'll say that. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Um, yeah, I love that. And, you know, we've talked about that you do workshops and how you show up. And I really mean that when we've met and, you know, we've talked a couple of times, you really do show up fully with who you are. Hmm. And when we talked about this question, you know, I'm Southern. I've shared that before. I come from the South. I was taught pretty as is pretty does, you know how you look is the most important and what you present and what you show, you know, not what's really happening, but what you present. Mm -hmm. And it's taken me years to kind of start to unpack that. So what I used to do is, is, is focus on how I looked and what I wanted people to see mm -hmm. what I said so that they would see the person that I wanted them to see versus what was really going on. And what I found is I'd end up in conversations and notice that they weren't looking at me. They didn't care what I look like. They didn't care what I was wearing or, and also that I would notice the connection that people were having around me. And I felt flat footed. I would like, now what? Like if that didn't matter and nobody's paying attention to that, it's not really a conversation starter. Where's the connection? Right. Right. And so I go back to what we talked about yesterday. Uh, I invite everybody on the, uh, on the show to point to yourself. So right now, everyone, this is actually a request. Yeah. Just this is actually a request. Point to yourself. Yeah. So, so isn't that interesting that actually, remember what I said yesterday on Zoom, a lot of times people will point here, mm -hmm. uh, but I still noticed that most of you that I, who I can see, because I can't see everybody, uh, pointed to your heart. And we actually make more connection heart to heart than we do mind to mind. Mm -hmm. It's that's where we live from. And so typically when, when you ask people to point to themselves, they'll, even on zoom, they'll start at their heart and see very quickly that, Oh, you can't see my hand. And so the hand moves up and gets to the head. Mm -hmm. uh, connecting intellectually is important. It can't be underplayed. You know, we, we, that's a part of who we are. But the essence of who we are lives in our heart and soul and spirit. If you know that that's my belief, but it doesn't have to be everybody's. But we we come from the heart, and so when we're having those conversations that you're talking about, Catherine, and and you know we're talking about the weather, or we're talking about business, or we're talking about this, or we're talking about that, we can still make a connection. But if we're not connected to ourselves, and this is where today's question comes in. If we're not connected to ourselves, then the conversation very quickly is going to become one-sided and we don't really connect with the other person. And that's when the blank stares come and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Right. And you, you said yesterday too, you said when we're hearing somebody talk and thinking about how we're going to respond. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and how that takes us immediately out of it. And I'm right here in my own self and you're still talking, giving me valuable information about you, who you are, show, and then yet I might be over here in my own world. Yeah, well, that really goes to what you were talking about about uh, appearance, and you know, I'm I'm from the north, and and I'm a guy, and I'm white, and you know, all of the all of the stereotypes and and so on, and um, and yet I had my own training about what's right, what's wrong, and and my particular father, you know. What I grew up with is you have to be right. You have to be right the first time and you have to be right the first time without help. And so, you know, it's like as a kid, it's like, I don't even know what that means. I was about to say, that's so, pretty easy to do, right? Yeah. So right from, right from the beginning, I had to jump into uh, kind of getting cues from other people, uh, making things up as I went along. And there was no place for heart in that. There was no place for what mattered to me. And so everything I, I did was focused on what's going to please the boss, what's going to please my wife, what's going to please this person, what's going to please that person. And, and 
And I think that's a piece of what fed my addiction because I had no clue who I was, what I wanted or how I, how I needed to live my life. And, um, and I wound up losing everything and having to start over. So yeah, the more we can be with ourselves and in our truth while we're with the other person, uh, then we can really have a connection. And there's really, whether it's a business collaboration or uh, a life partnership or just a casual conversation, mm -hmm. we can actually connect with the other person. Yeah, and that's what I was going to ask, you know, first, why? And then I know you've got some tips about how to do this, but it is sort of what is important about this. Mm, yeah. So one of the biggest things that I hear as a coach and that I see in the various media and so on is that we're living in a time when people are feeling lonely. They're feeling isolated. They're feeling like um, what matters to them. They're not sure if it really matters anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of questioning. There's a lot of doubt. There's a lot of uh, where do I fit in? And, um, and there's a huge emphasis on fitting in with other people. And we give a lot of lip service. You know, there's a, there's a lot of people out there selling stuff about, uh, about how to be yourself. But even in that, it's how do you be yourself? Uh, you know, how do you look right and, and feel right and dress right and everything? Uh, so still, so that you can fit in with other people and not feel alone. Mm -hmm. Well, that's kind of backwards. Because if you're if you're doing everything for everybody else and you're not connecting to yourself, it doesn't matter yeah. how much uh, how many friends you have or how many likes you get or uh, how many people applaud you on stage or whatever the scenario is, because you're still going to feel empty inside. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel that disconnect inside. And so the most important thing is, again, first, how do I connect with myself? And then share that with other people and, and invite them into my life. Allow myself to be invited into theirs and invite them into mine. And what that does actually is it does narrow the, you know, we become afraid, well, I'm going to lose some friends. Yes, you will. <laughs> but they weren't really friends to begin with. They were hangers on uh, because you were a number to them, just like they were a number to you. Yeah. And that's yeah. the move away. It's brilliant because we actually had, we had a show on this about, you know, being in a room full of people and feeling lonely. Mm. And how does that happen? Um, it started with Tara walking up and down the streets of New York and looking around at the faces and expressions. And you're right. I keep, I keep thinking about being out with friends or, you know, quote unquote, or people that I wanted to like be a part of groups I wanted to be a part of and coming home mm. and how empty and like now what? And that's when, you know, I drink wine or eat food or whatever, because starting to feel, fill that void. Yep. Yeah. And so, and so the number, you know, the, what I sometimes say to uh, clients is you are the one constant in your life from womb to tomb, <laughs> from mm. the moment of, of conception until probably days, maybe eons after you die. <laughs> you will have some kind of a connection to you or your energy. And mm. so you have to come first. That doesn't mean that, that you treat anybody else as second to you. But we have to show up like we matter to ourselves. Mm -hmm. now, I am my best friend. And sometimes I don't treat my best friend the way he deserves to be treated. Um, I don't treat him like a best friend. But I can come back to that. I can when I when when I'm reminded by some pain or some trigger or some something that happens in life because it always does. Uh, oh yeah, I got to come home to me hmm. because otherwise none of the rest of it is going to matter. Right, and it's it's like it's worth investing in, you yeah. know, in yeah. that in us in that relationship. You think about it; it's like you're, you know, it's. I love the way you said that, mm -hmm. and I want to tie it to business, honestly, mm -hmm. because we often forget. It sounds kind of woo woo, and yeah, you got to love yourself, and that's great. But 
when I was thinking about this this morning, um, I was actually talking to Tom about it. I said, you know, those are the, if you show up and you're not with yourself, mm -hmm. you're in relationship, you might get the deal done, the transaction, you might get a client, but those aren't going to be the clients for life. Right. You know, those are the ones who are connected and they stick around and it's easy and you're not trying, you don't feel like you're work, you know, and it's like, it's really important to remember that not only do you make a connection, but the connection you make is so fulfilling that it can resource us. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's absolutely true, Catherine. You know, I've been at this work for, I've lost count, 25, 30 years a long while because I was mm -hmm. doing it part-time before full-time. And I still remember most of my clients. Uh, there were a few who just jumped in to, you know, get something in the moment. But my real clients, I remember them all. I remember their face. I remember what we worked on. Um, and that's because of the connection that we had. You know, I, th I think most of us have been to experiences where we've gone to a workshop or we've gone to some kind of event where we got these wonderful ahas. And a lot of clients will come to work with us because they want that, whatever the version, depending on your work, whatever the version of the aha is. Mm -hmm. Ahas are great and they're wonderful and they wake us up, but they don't sustain us. They're not really food, they're snacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And um, and it's it's the real connections, uh, it's the being with that we start to count on. It's the relationships that we grow. And um, I mean, one of the beauties, I think, of of this era that we're in right now is business is talking much more about relationship than um than the intellectual and 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 sort of old business model of just buying and selling goods, services, and and mm -hmm. intellectual property. So connection is more important than ever, mm -hmm. particularly in a time when so many of us feel so disconnected. And and uh, one more thing, I, I, the with COVID. And how isolated we became. Zoom, Zoom gave us an opportunity to relearn how to connect with each other because we were still hungry for a connection. Mm -hmm. And we had this magnificent technology to help us connect in a particular way. And for some groups, that happened. Uh, there are some groups and organizations that develop deep connections on Zoom. And then when they met in person, it became that much more alive. But we wanted to get back to normal too quickly. And so the some of the opportunities of Zoom were missed because we went right back to the loneliness and right back to the, you know, I'm looking at a screen, I'm not really connecting with someone. Mm -hmm. I'm not really connecting with someone, you know, isn't that because I'm not really connecting with me? I'm looking at the screen rather than looking at a face. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right now I can see uh, Tom and I can see Stan and I can see Catherine and I can, so, uh, so how do I make the most of that? How do I be with me and be with you even in technology? Because mm. this is the wave of the future. And so we either find a way in or we're going to be left out. Wow. I love that. I love that you're bringing it to technology because I'm hearing a lot now, you know, the urge to be in person and as things are going back and it's almost like Zoom, we can't do that on Zoom, you know? Now I know many of us are Zoomed out, um, but what I realized in sort of my journey through this, where I said, you know, I'd show up about, you know, trying to present, realize it was empty, is that people notice my energy. Mm -hmm much more than they notice anything else. Yeah. So beyond what you've just shared, tell us specifically, how do we be with me? When I notice I am zoned out, I'm checking my email while we're on Zoom, you know, um, and then I see we've got some questions. So I want to definitely get to that, but give us just a couple tips about when we notice we're off, what, how do we get back to ourselves? Yeah. Um, 
everybody's going to find their own way, but a couple of simple tips that I use is number one, I when when I'm disconnected from myself, when I'm focused on something out, something or someone other, um, I realize I'm breathing pretty shallow. I'm not really, I'm not even connected to my breath. Mm. Uh, and so the first Your thing is force. Isn't that yeah, interesting? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um <laughs> even the word spirit, I mean, not to get too woo-woo, but you know, we talk about spirituality and it's it's finding its way into business. And the word spirit is Greek for to breathe. <laughs> wow. I so, know. Or that's where it comes from, spirari. And so it's about you know, how do I reconnect just with my aliveness? Mm -hmm. So first, take a breath. Uh, second, I'm very tactile. And so I want to touch something. Uh, you can't see it because my hand is in my lap. But but um, but very often when I'm feeling disconnected, I'll do this or or just very, um, you know, I'll, I'll be aware of touching my knee or sometimes you'll see me do something like this. And it's not that I'm pondering something i'm i'm feeling the hair on my beard i'm reconnecting to george mm -hmm. so um uh but some of us are visual and we can do it in a in a visual way some of us are very auditory and so uh really listening to the other person and really listening to yourself with a sense of curiosity mm -hmm. and a sense of wonder rather than a sense of of what am i going to do with this information more uh well what what's underneath this you mm -hmm. know and, and to really get curious uh those are some of the ways that that help me to connect uh but we're all going to find our own ways once we start the practice of having that connection really really matter to us mm -hmm. what i love about what you said is that each of those are bringing us into our body yeah Breath brings us into our body, touching anything like noticing where your body is in time and space, even listening, because you have to come back yeah. to be aware of that. Yeah. One of the things I always tell my clients is when, when you've lost connection, when you feel like you're in your head a lot, or even above that, and you start mm -hmm. to get confused and, and so on, just feel your feet. Yeah. Feel your feet inside the confines of your shoes, or if you're barefoot, feel your feet on the ground. Yeah. Just feel your feet. Yeah. And wiggle your toes and all of that, because what that's going to do, like you say, is bring the energy back into your body. Right. That's great. Gosh, thank you, George, so much. This is such a good conversation. Um, I want to go to some of the questions we've got. I see Sorrel has his hands raised. Sorrel. Good morning, George. Thank you good for morning, Sorrel. To us. Uh, as you were speaking, three questions kept running into my head. And I think you may have answered one of them, but the, the three questions that are connected for me and uh, that I'm grappling with right now are, when I say myself, what is the myself I'm referring to? I mean, what is myself? Mm -hmm. Then you say, well, be with myself. So if I'm going to be with myself, what is it I'm being with that I get to share? Would you, would you illuminate some of that for us, please? Sure. It's a great question, Sorrel. And I think, again, to some degree, each of us is going to have our own answer to that, uh, because we do define ourselves uh, differently. But for me, myself is that that authentic uh, that authentic core inside myself, where um, where I feel present, I feel at home, I feel um i feel a sense of uh steadiness and so even when all the other stuff that comes at me from life um even when that kind of derails me or or sends me down a rabbit hole um i can always come back to these values and 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 this particular truth if you will that that feels home to me so um so yeah that's that's how i would answer that question and i and i really and truly invite people to find their own answer to that question because um because we 
even though we have a, a common language that we can understand each other in a basic way, we understand ourselves in a little bit different way. You know, T.S. Eliot in, in his book, um, uh, Old, Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats, on which the musical Cats was based, he said, cats have three names. The one that people know them by, the one they know by them, the one that they call themselves, and the one that other cats call them. <laughs> and you know, we have we have multiple selves: the one you know, the one that you know me by, and the one that I know me by, and probably the one that my source knows me by. And um, and what I want always is to try and get those into alignment. And sometimes I don't even know what that means, um, but I can still try. So I hope that's helpful. And thank, thank you. Thank you, George. Uh, it, it invites me to continue to inquire. Yes. What is myself? Yeah. How can I be with that? All that it is, you know, whether I judge it good, bad, or ugly, or pretty, or lovely. Mm -hmm. And how do I muster up the courage to share that with another? Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm with. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. The, that's one of the reasons why I do the shadow work is because we we bury so much of ourselves in the shadow because of either whatever other people have told us or because of shame or because of not liking that aspect of ourselves or whatever it is. But it's all just parts of us. And what we're denying, we're also denying the grace and the power of it. We don't get to use what we don't what we don't own. And so by learning to see in the dark and, and owning those different aspects of ourselves, and, and if we feel shame, okay, this is George feeling shame. How do I work with that? You know, and is there somebody who I know has talked about shame, who maybe I can have a conversation with, or is the book, uh, there a book I can read about shame or whatever? Mm -hmm. um, so yes, how do we, how do we be with all our pieces? That's great. Tom. George, good morning. I, thank you. This is this is really helpful. I, you know, Catherine asked you the question of how do we get back when we're off? It made me think of the question and you used the word sustain hmm. uh, a few minutes ago when you're talking about being at conferences. But how do you sustain yourself? You know, how do you think of, you know, if it's daily habits or some way just to keep yourself within yourself? Yeah, that's, that's a, a great question. That really is. And um, and I would love to tell you that I that I do it constantly 24 7 365. Um, but but the honest answer is more like. Um, have you ever seen the old uh, old movie projectors where you've got all these different pictures and I mean now everything is on video and so it's slow but but the old movie projectors. Uh, the, the the image goes fast or slow depending on the speed of the projector. So what happens is I'm connected, I'm disconnected. I'm connected, I'm disconnected. And what I want to do is speed that up. <laughs> so uh, because it, we're never going to be connected to ourselves all the time. I mean, even in this conversation, um, you know, I talked about how do I be with you and or how do I be with me when I'm with you? And and that's the focus of what we're talking about. And there have been times when uh, when Catherine has been asking a question and I am thinking of the answer. Oh, well, that's not that's not serving either one of us. So how do I get back to her? And and so giving ourselves permission not to be like this constantly, where I'm constantly connected to myself, but to keep noticing when I'm not, how far away I am, and do what it takes to come back. And what happens if I practice that and make that important is I don't get so far away from myself, and I'm able to get back much quicker. So, um, so it's not a constant. It's not a. It's not a. Once we're done, we're done. And and sounds like you give yourself some grace because you recognize you won't be uh, where you want to be all the time. And then you, then the awareness and then the practice. Permission to screw up and practice to get better. Yes. Oh, good. 
Good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. It's the concept of recovery, you know, exactly. you just recovering, just keep exactly. recovering. And, and I think that's the practice of resilience too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, both recovery and resilience, because that's, that's really what the resilience is, is recognizing when I'm disconnected from myself or when I, I'm not able to do something. Mm -hmm. And either digging in to get the resources to do it or, or reaching out to get the resources to do it. But either way, how do I resource in order to, to come back to, to myself, come back to the present moment and come back to what has to be done in the moment? Yeah, I've never heard resilience defined that way. That's, that's really insightful. I've mm -hmm. always heard it more. You prepare and you try to keep a state of resilience, not you know, the dynamic aspect of returning to it. But thank you. Yeah. yeah, we're part of nature. And there is no aspect of nature that I've ever seen. And I'm in nature a lot. Uh, there's no aspect of nature that I've ever seen that is constant. It is always in flux, in flow, in movement, in vibration. Uh, and we are part of nature. And so if I don't give myself permission for that... <laughs> then once again, that, that's part of the disconnect. I'm expecting something of myself that I can't possibly live up to. Ooh, that, that doesn't feel good. Yeah, that's great. George, thank you so much for this. This has been awesome. Um, and you've given me a lot to think about and I'm sure others as well. So thank you for sharing your gifts with us today, for being with us and for talking to us about how to be with ourselves when we're with you and with others. Thank you for having me. This has been a delight. Awesome. You're welcome. We're going to close out how we normally do with our ten, our seven tenets. So move that body, get into the body, feel it and be present. Sleep, be resourced, give, eat mostly plants. Your body will thank you. Stress less and do that by laughing out loud. Find a way to laugh. Find anything to laugh at so fun and love love yourself know yourself be yourself and share yourself with others thank you george thank you everybody thank you. on the daily huddle for being with us today thank you george thank you, everybody. thank you catherine mm -hmm. right. thank you george thank you catherine take care